good study habits to develop. And that's all we're talking today in, in the Life, Mood, and Reality podcast. So it simply means that um, if there are good study habits, there are also bad study habits. Good study habits includes finding a quiet place, a location to study, taking breaks, setting goals, taking practice tests. These are the things we will talk about in this podcast. Studying can be hard. The good news is that anybody can develop good study habits. To make studying more effective. And not just effective, efficient and enjoyable. So it's not something, a good study habit is not something to endure. It is something to enjoy. So you want to develop a good study habit, right? And that's the reason why you're listening to this, because you want to know, okay, there's something I've been doing, it's not working. What can I do better? Let me begin by saying, start small. Yes, start small. Don't expect to do everything in this list that I will be sharing with you in this podcast. At least not right away, okay? I'm not saying, okay, abandon them, don't talk about them again, but what I'm simply saying is start small, okay? So you can pick one or two instead. Um, It is also important that you set realistic goals for yourself. And I, I will explain this because we have realistic goals, we have achievable goals, we have expected goals. Okay, realistic goals talks about this is what I have achieved. Realistic goal is uh, more or less saying this is what, this is the level that I am right now. That's the level I am right now. I'm in level 20, I'm in level 30. Achievable goals talks about what you've achieved. What success have you presented? What success have you had okay so i studied this and this was what i had i had an a in this achievable expected goals is what do i need to do to get to the level that i intend to okay that i intend to so uh, that is why this good study habits that you need to develop will be very crucial towards your academic success So here are 11 tips to improve your study habit. Find a good place to study. Find a good place to study. Finding a good location to study is one of the most important elements of studying well. Look for a quiet place with minimal distraction. Okay, most people, okay, are you studying? Yes. And... You study, I'm hearing some sound. Well, that is the TV. Excuse me. You're studying in your city room with the with the with your LED big screen in front of you. You're not doing study. You're just reading. There's a difference between reading and studying. You cannot say, but Mr. Jerry, I understand it. You don't. Because there is a distraction in front of you, and probably by the time you um, a study session that should have ended probably 30 minutes ago has exceeded to two hours. Why? You read for like two minutes and you had a TV screen for like 40 minutes. And I know you're listening to me. I know you, I know you can actually relate to this because most of the time you've done this. So what I am saying is you have to find a good location to study. Look for some place where you'll be able to focus and won't be interrupted by loud sounds or people or things who constantly 
wants your attention. If you have a school library, that would be a good place in your spare time. A quiet corner in your house can be all but a good place to start. The second one is minimize distraction. Picking a good location to study can be the first step in keeping yourself focused on your work. But there are many types of distractions. I want to talk about them. I will tell you those types of distractions that can reach you no matter where you choose to work. Even if you're looking, even if you're at the closet, you close yourself. I'm going to, I'm going to read in the closet. I'm going to study in the closet. There are still some distractions that can get to you. So here are some of the tips on minimizing the distraction. Turn off your Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to study for 30 minutes. One hour. Turn off your Wi-Fi. So if you're working on a computer and you don't need your Wi-Fi, try turning it off. Because there's something about you connecting with your Wi-Fi. Before you know, you're checking something, you're checking something, you're checking something, and the time is gone. Your time is gone. So this can keep you wandering into the distracting part of the internet. And uh, this is where I present what I teach, IGCC, ICT, because Yes, there's paper two, there's paper three. All these are practical oriented that needs to be carried out, tasks that need to be carried out with your computer. But you really don't need the internet to carry these tasks. Because why you have, you've had those source, source files, those materials, those videos all downloaded into your local computer. So you can be focused and you can work. The next form of Tips to help you minimize distraction is be mindful of your phone. Phone can be a distraction. Okay? It's no secret that smartphones can be hugely distracting. So turning off your notifications, keeping your phone out of sight in your bag or giving it to a friend to keep you from checking it often can help you stay focused. You're studying and your phone is right there with you. Um, I don't know, somebody help me out, but are you really studying? <laughs> okay, are you really studying? Because every bit of notification you want to see what, it is human nature. There's a notification, you want to see what it is. You want to see who it is. So keeping your phone out of sight, in your bag, I don't mean keep your phone out of sight, okay, let me put my phone in two meters away from me. Trust me, in two meters you get it. <laughs> so put it in your bag, zip it, give it to your mom. Okay, give your phone to your parents. Mom, this phone is you. Just take the phone. I want to study any messages that come. I don't want to know. I want to study for two hours. I want to study for this. Give it to your aunties. Give it to your family people to keep you focused in your studies. Study with a friend. Study with a friend. Sometimes, study with a friend or two, whether or not you're working on the same materials can help you and keep you accountable and focused. Can help you focus, can keep you accountable. It can make, it can make sure each of you are on the same page about studying. Because obviously, I can't be studying this person is studying, A is studying, B is studying, and C is probably, I don't know, stressing or with his gadget, then that is not a very um, a good study um, friend frenzy, if you want to call it that way, right? So everybody has to be on the same page. We are all studying, our gadgets are out, and this is us studying. So studying with a friend can actually help you um, in mind to stay focused. So it helps you to, it keeps one another from any form of what? Distraction. What we call distraction free. At least until it's time to take a break. And here's the thing about studying with a friend. When it's time to take a break. When it's time to take a break, it's only time where you, you start gisting, 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 and you gist away 
till you forget that you have to go back to your study session. So it's, it's two sides of the coin, two sides. So you have to be careful. If you're studying with a friend, you have to ensure that everybody's on the same page. If we're having five minutes break, we're having five minutes break. If we're having 10 minutes break, we're having 10 minutes break. They shouldn't be, okay, we can get back to it later. No. Don't break the chain. Take breaks. Take breaks. Taking intentional breaks has been linked to better retention, increased attention, and boosting of energy. Research have even shown that working for around 50 minutes, then giving yourself a probably a 10 to 50 minutes break can lead to optimal productivity. Okay, so here are some of the ways you can take breaks. Okay, how do you take a break? Because most people say, okay, okay, it's time for me to take a break. So what kind of break are you taking? Taking a break is not going back to your television set. Okay, wow, I'm taking a break. Let me watch this TV series. Some TV series are 40 minutes, hello. Some TV series are one hour, hello. I'm just taking a break, Mr. Joe. I'm taking a break. I'm watching this TV series. No. I, I, I'm just taking a break. I'm watching this discovery. No. Mr. Joe, I'm just taking a break. I'm watching Netflix. No. You're not taking a break. You're breaking from your study session. So one way to take a break is take a short walk. Listening to a mood-boosting song, to instrumental, something that would put you in the right mind for study. You can relax with a friend. Taking a break could also mean going, having a dialogue about what you studied, right? Just gisting about it. You can stretch, you can meditate, you can zone out and daydream, you can have a snack, Take a shower. You can clean your room. You can use, okay, all right, I have like 15 minutes to spare. Let me use this time to clean my room. All these are the recommended ways of taking a break. So not all breaks are created equal. Checking your phone or social media as a study break has actually been linked to a decrease in performance. So, okay, let me just check what's happening in the social world. Nobody wants to know what is happening in the social world. They don't even know what you need to know, right? So, it's not important. Your study is very important. Whatever is happening in the social world can wait. And for your information, it is not going anywhere. You can always see it at any time. And that's why it's, it's on social media. Number four, space out your studying. Cramming can still help you get a good grade on a test, but studies shows that you are much more likely to forget that information as soon as the test is over. And most of you be like, oh, that's all I need, just to write the test. No, there's exam, okay. <laughs> So really holding on to materials you've learned, making your, your exam season less stressful. So holding on to those information will help you in your exam preparation. It makes your exam preparation less stressful. It requires consistency and well-spaced study session. So instead of saving your study for before a test, okay, I'm going to study when it's two days to the test. Please don't do this. I beg you. I'm going to study a week to the test. Five days to the test. No, don't do this. So instead of saving up before a test, briefly review materials you have learned, even if it's once a week. So if you're studying for an exam, space out your study up to several weeks or even months. Now, for the Cambridge curriculum, we have like four weeks before your um, continuous assessment and maybe another four weeks and then you have your exams. So you can actually start 
at the get-go, at the beginning. So leading up to that test day, exam day. So this can really help you retain the information long term. Number five, set study goals for each session. Set study goals for each session. Set study goals for each session of studying you have. Don't just study because I want to study. What is the goal? What do you want to accomplish in your study session? So it can be time-based or content-based. Okay, let me give you an example. You might aim to study for two hours or review three chapters of your textbook or both. So this is my goal. At the end of, the, at the end of my study session, I should have covered this and this. Don't be too harsh on yourself if you didn't get through as much as you had planned. Sometimes it doesn't always work the way you want. Now I'm saying this, this is for um, exceptional study learners. Those who are always putting, who, who, who are always having daily studies. And one day you didn't, you didn't have, you didn't accomplish the goal you had set. Don't be too harsh on yourself. I'm not talking about um, learners who are just starting the study. Oh, okay, I was supposed to study for 30, 30 minutes and I studied for, no, no, no. I'm not talking about that. Okay? Sometimes studying can take longer than expected. Okay? So if you, if it actually did not go the way you planned, okay, for ICT paper 3, okay, I'm going to cover this past paper. I'm going to cover this topic. I'm going to cover this. And you did not cover it. Don't be too harsh on yourself. Sometimes it, you need to just spread it out. So keep taking world space breaks and schedule another study session. The next thing I want to talk about is reward yourself. Reward yourself. Rewarding yourself with treats has been linked to better self-control and can be useful in forming good habits. So testing yourself, okay, if I do this, if I get this well, I'm going to give myself a small reward if I finish this session. Or perhaps a larger reward if you have a productive day of studying can always be a good motivation to get your goals. Small rewards can be a candy, a hot chocolate from your favorite coffee shop, Maybe a quick game of your choice. Okay, so it, so it could be, and this is how I bring it in. If I study all the goals I want to achieve for the week, if I achieve all of them, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, on Saturday, I can reward myself with probably a little bit time of gaming. Right? So it, it gives me that motivation that, yes, I'm playing this game because I've achieved all I wanted to achieve. Okay? So this is very, very important. It could be a TV show, right? So bigger it was for a longer day of studying or longer week of studying or getting things done with an exam can include getting your favorite meal, um, spending some time relaxing with friends or uh, making time with your favorite activities um, that you used to do. The next one I want to talk about is study with a group. Yes. the several benefits to forming a study group. Several benefits to forming a study group. I have a prep study with my form room in preparation for the exam. Usually it's really like a week um, prior to the um, exam or to the CA, but we do have it. But it is always important that you don't have to wait for scheduled studies, prep studies, you can actually have your own private studies prior to the study sessions or to the prep studies that is being scheduled a week to the exam. So it's not when it's a week to the exam that you start your study. Studies are meant to be start at the very first day of school. So that's several benefits to forming a study group. So and group members can help one another walk through difficult problems Especially when you're having that issue, 
there's always the same. A problem shared is a problem solved. So when you get stuck in your private study, a study group becomes an eye-opener for you. A study group can become an eye-opener for you, okay? Because somebody in the study session can help you in working you through that difficult problem. And if it's ICT, hmm, I might have a thing or two. Mm, okay. All right. So it helps you to provide a form of encouragement. It holds each other accountable to studying goals. It provides a different perspective and makes study more enjoyable. Even explaining those difficult concepts to others can help with comprehension and retention. So if you have a study group, a group study session, set a goal. Even if it's a study group, there should be a goal so that everyone can work together and don't forget to take periodic breaks as you would in studying by yourself. Take practice test. The proof that you have successfully studied is the test that you have performed exceedingly well. Is the pretest. Let's see that one. Is the pretest that you've studied well. So you studied. You say, Jerry, I'm done studying. The proof is in the test. The proof is in the performance of the practice test. So test and practice test have been long seen as useful tools to help students learn and retain information. Besides revealing gaps in knowledge and reducing exam anxiety, being tested makes us retrieve information from memory. A powerful study back to way of holding on to information was learned. Okay, so when you're done studying, and I do this in my study study prep, where okay, I give everybody probably an hour to just glance through um, what you have done on your private schedule, just go through all those things, and once the time is up, I give them a form of assessment, a pre-assessment, to check on what you've studied. The proof that you've studied is in the performance of the practice test. So your performance will tell me how well you studied. Have you studied very well? Have you studied well? Or have you st studied exceptionally well? So you don't have a practice exam, I got you covered. So here are several ways that you can test yourself. That's what this podcast is all about, to show you how you can study effectively. So number one, what I do, and these are things I do, create flashcards. You can manually create the flashcards, or you can actually go to websites. And for those who probably don't know those websites to go to, you can send me a message. Um, it's right there on my YouTube channel, uh, Agile Tech, and I will send you some links on how you can create your flashcards. Okay? Write your own questions. Write your own questions. Writing your own questions would give you an in-depth understanding of what you've studied. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm studying presentations. It's practical, it's theoretical. Okay, so what are the questions you can form from it? In practical, how to import the IOTF? How to make it of the master slide? In theoretical, how can you even insert images into your slide master? What's a link slide? What's a placeholder? All these are very important. Search for practice questions online. So you're probably going to presentations and you're wondering, or you're probably going to um, the effects of using IT. And you've come up with your questions, but you need more. Well, for ICT, you have a Gyrotech, there's a YouTube channel. There are very helpful YouTube channels that you can actually go to to get your work covered. So you can go to Gyrotech, search for that topic, and go to those materials, and from there you can be able to form questions. There are even topical questions on a Gyrotech where you can actually pick them, try to attempt them, 
and then watch how I'm able to provide the answer to each of the questions. It's always advisable if it's within your study session and you and it's doing your short breaks, you can actually go into my YouTube channel, look at those um, materials, download them into your local computer, and then you can turn off the Wi-Fi. That's if it's, if it's within your study breaks, right? If it's chemistry, you're having some issues with chemistry. Um, I, I, I don't know, like maybe some aconic acid or acid or base or something. I'm not a chemist, okay, but and I get by, okay, all right. So you can actually find some um, resource materials from Agile Tech. You can actually find some resource material from Physics for Everybody, right? So all these are very, very helpful for you, okay? So that would help you to be able to say, okay, let me look for these materials that I'm looking to. Very, very important. And if it's physics that you're having issues with, maybe you want to know something about space physics or probably something about, um, I want to know about Ohm's law. I want to know how to solve this. I'm trying to solve this my way, but I'm not actually getting the answer that it should be. Well, you're in luck because there's something called physics for everybody because literally it's for everybody. It's not for somebody. It's not for maybe um, anybody. It's for every. Body. And when you go in there, there are so many resource materials from not just past papers, but, you know, topical questions, topics being treated that would actually help you. So all you have to do is go in there. If it's within your study books, you can actually download those contents to your computers and you can actually watch them to see how that was being solved. Not just solved, thought of the steps, the methods on which they can, um, those um, particular formulas were derived, that particular question were being solved. It helps you a lot so that this makes your practice test to be very, very rich. And one of the ways is if you haven't finished, go to Physics for Everybody, pick those questions that he's about to solve, try attempting them before playing the video. So you can see the method he's used to solve and check with yours and see what is he doing differently. How can you also bring this method to what you have? And that will make your study to be very, very rich. Have a quiz. Have a friend quiz you. This is another way to also checkmate your study. Have a friend quiz you. And and whether you have a friend or you don't have a friend, well, I still got you covered because there are some quizzes I have for ICT on Kahoot that you can actually use to actually quiz yourself to say, okay, well, I've studied. Let me see how well I've studied, right? But if you have a friend, you have a parent, and I, have, and I had a, um, during my study prep, I'm going to share something with you. During my study prep uh, with my student, one of my learners went off from the study prep. So I, 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 called, I, called, the, I, I called the mom, I'm like, hey, mom, um, you know, it's not in the study prep. She left. And she said, oh, yes, I'm so sorry about that. And she left because this is the time where I get to quiz her on what she studied. And which is so cool. I was super excited when I heard that. I said, Ma, please, by all means, go ahead. That is an extension of our study prep. So it's always very important when I see parents working together to ensuring that we bring the best out of that child. How cool is that? So have a friend quiz you. The next one is use your own words. Use your own words. Expressing an idea in your own words increases your understanding of a subject and it helps you bring um, and it helps you bring hang on to that information. So don't just form most of the time we look for those materials online, but a few times you can actually bring out words. Right? Use your own words to see how you can be able to tackle that question. Express your own ideas. And by the time you express your own ideas, Trust me, in ICT Paper 1, you're not always wrong. There's always something in there that I can use, I can fine-tune, so that it makes your understanding far better. So after you do this section of text, summarize important points. Summary is very important. You can actually summarize what you've studied. Okay, I started this topic. Let's see how I can summarize them. So this is very helpful. The next one is ask for help, ask for help. You might find yourself stuck on a problem or unable to understand the explanation in the test book. Somebody who's able to walk you through the issue might provide a fresh explanation you need. And if it's ICT, 
I tell you, right? If you send me, if you put up a comment on my YouTube channel, I'm very likely to respond in the next 20 minutes or less. If it's more, probably I'm offline. If it's an issue on physics, you go in there on physics for everybody, you put up a comment, and he's going to respond. Right? So ask for help. When you have an issue, please ask for help. You can approach your teachers, okay, um, or your classmate who is proficient in that subject, okay, or your study um, members, okay, for new ways on how you can understand what you're stuck in. So feel free, right? So it, it, it feels like you can benefit from being close to the subject, right? And most times, if you still need a special attention, right, you might actually need to consider having what? Looking for a tutor, okay? So that is another way that can help you when you're having those issues and you're being stuck on it. Finally, take care of yourself. At the end of the day, your brain is an organ in your body. Take care of it by taking care of yourself. Get regular exercise. Eat well. Don't overdrink. Get good sleep. And take care of your mental well-being. And I'm going to break this down a little bit. Because when we talk about sleep, study has linked sleep deprivation to decrease cognitive function, including reduced attention span. Doing worse on test. Everybody sleeps needs are different. You need to recognize that. But as a student, you typically need between seven and eight. I can even add and a half hours of sleep a night. Plus, getting more sleep can make you happier and benefit your social life. Okay, you study life. Food is important. As you study, try to incorporate more fruits, vegetables, plant sources of proteins. Um, these are very, very helpful. Okay, uh, unsaturated oils like olive oils into your diets, all of which have been linked to better cognitive performance. Exercise. Exercise brings oxygen to the part of your brain responsible for thought. Encourages the development of new nerve cells. It boosts brain cells connection. This makes for the brain that are more neuroplastic and efficient. Plus, it brings a host of other health benefits. Like lower blood, lower blood pressure, um, reduced mental strength, and even weight control. Mental awareness. Your mental awareness is important because it helps us to deal with stress, improve your relationship with others, allow you to live more meaningfully and be more productive in your work. Exercising, eating well, getting good sleep can boost your mental health. This is very important. And I hope as you follow through on all the things that I've talked about. I see you having a very wonderful grade in your CA, in your internal exams, your Cambridge exam, your Edexcel, in your AS, Cambridge AS, um, A-levels, your SAT exams, any curriculum that you're currently doing. I see you having a very good grade. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.